Okay, let's start um, and just dive in. Um, so, so happy to have you here, Elena. And yeah, and I would just love for you to kind of present yourself and, uh, and, and so happy to have you and so honored to have you for the first uh, Twitter spaces that you're doing just a few days after you finally opened Twitter. Um, and yeah. for those of you who don't know, I met um, Elena at uh, NFT NYC at a few of the Fashion NFTs events. Uh, and really happy to have you here, Elena. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me and encouraging me to open Twitter and get into the space. I'm very, very excited. Um, yeah, it was very fun to meet you at NFT Week and just, you know, start getting into the space because I do feel it's something in my heart. I feel that there's so much future in the space and I want to bring my magic as well, spirituality, creativity into the space myself. So I would love to have um, these sessions, these spaces with you, or with other people and just, you know, jam about all things, spirituality, creativity, feminine energy, um, all the things that I love. And I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the people are looking for some of that wisdom uh, from sources and maybe I can I can be one who can provide that. So uh, a little bit about me. Um, before I got into spirituality, being a coach and running retreats and doing workshops and working with women, I actually had a 20-year career on Wall Street. I was in finance, corporate finance and fintech. So I didn't grow up, quote unquote, in, in the entrepreneurial world or world of crypto web three. Well, none of us did, right? So this is all new and exciting. And for me in my life, um, I, I did go through so many transformations and variations. And I feel like I'm living many different lifetimes within one lifetime. <laughs> so I feel that Web3 and what's coming in the world is very timely because we as a collective going through a huge, huge paradigm shift. And a lot of people are confused right now as to what's going on because we just coming out of pandemic. There's a lot of things going on in Web3, just like the world is changing so much. And it's, it's, it's so fast. Like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I feel like the 24 hours a day that I used to have, like shrink to like <laughs> to morning or 16, like the time is just running so fast that, and because we spend so much time with devices in our hands, right? We spend so much time in social, on social media or things are happening at like light of speed. And we really need to find ways where we can um, ground ourselves, when we can connect back to our truth, when we can connect back to our intuition, to our own wisdom, to our own inner being. So we don't get lost in everything that's going on because it's so easy right now to look at what everybody else is doing, to compare ourselves, to be really stretched thin and lose ourselves, right? And I feel like the mental health and um, like on the rise, right? That we need more people who's paying attention to mental health, who's paying attention to what's going on with people's psyche, what's going on with just because of like social media and all the things that are going on in the world, right? So many things going on in the world and we're confused. And like, I have two children and my children are 16 and 12 and I just see how much time they spend on electronics versus me. Like I, I, I remember life without an electronics, right? I remember life without social media and it's beautiful in a way that we now have the ways to connect to each other, right? So even right now sitting in the space with all of you, it's beautiful to connect this way, right? We can really attract people into our life that are on the same wavelength, right? The people that are uh, getting into consciousness, that are expanding their awareness, people that are interested in deeper knowing themselves, people that are interested in contributing to, um, you know, to the world in a beautiful way, like serve in, in service, right? Doing something that can um, bring our experiences to high octave, right? And bring our experience so we can live in higher vibration. And this is what I'm here for. And I can take this conversation whatever way you would like to. We can talk about um, how I view, how we think, I think that we should raise our vibration, how we, the ways we can do it. Because again, we spend so much time on social media, but I'm happy to take this conversation however you want to, Dahlia. Let's, let's you know, have an interview here and jam on this. And anybody, again, I, I'm not familiar with the Twitter space, but I, I'm sure that people um, on a panel can ask questions and maybe share their perspectives with what I just shared in the past few minutes, but um, I'm happy to speak about it, whichever way the conversation will flow. This is what I actually wanted to talk to you about today is how important it is to really be 
uh, establishing boundaries about your own energy because we all have our own energy body that it's not just a physical body right and we are when we spend other people and when we are in the relationships that could be quote-unquote toxic right that could be people that um, could be draining us it's very important to stay true to yourself and do various practices where you can ground yourself and where you can get back into your own center so for me personally and i live in new york city but i try to always find time to be in nature like i live not far from the water and we have parks in new york and we have beaches in new york so i try to ways where i can any single day and especially i try to do this early in the morning when there are not a lot of people out and you know in the world out there on on the streets or by the beach. And I love to go into the nature and just put my feet on the ground and ground myself. Try to find ways where you spend time away from social media, away from TV, away from toxic people, and just really connect to nature, maybe establish some breathing exercises, maybe some movement uh, practices, because it's great for physical body to, you know, move yourself and also healthy foods, mostly plant food, plant-based foods are great, Um, you know, limit processed foods things like that that's really bringing your body into high vibe and just for everybody um the way i define vibration and for you know i'm sure a lot of you know that we are energetic beings we're not just this physical body we're not just this biology we're so much bigger than that right and our vibration our our vibe you know good vibes right we want to be in a good vibe our vibe is defined by everything that we think feel do eat engaging with like it's, it's a combination culmination of all these things so for anybody if you want to increase your vibration i would really suggest to like spend some time sitting by yourself journaling and uh, and just examining yourself where are you drained the most and try to eliminate that so i would just leave it at that and let me know what you have what kind of questions you have for me yeah, I love that. And I think it's so important, like you said, you know, to take some time uh, to spend with ourselves, to go if it is to the park or, you know, just kind of get our thoughts and feelings out um, with everything going. And I love having you here because I think it's also what you're teaching is so important um, for today's world. I mean, also lots of, I think, my art was created and inspired, like it was a healing path for me, uh, the eyes of fashion, and I spoke about it quite a bit, but if there's some people here that don't know, um, that was inspired by this contrast of the judgment that I felt, and like you said, mental health is so important, and we often tend kind of to feel things that are different in our external world, but eventually, like, what happens in our internal world what is what dictates our life in so many ways. So um, for me, it was kind of the contrast between this... Um, colorful world uh the fashion world that the eyes were inspired by but also this judgment that i felt uh so that's where the judging eye comes from that's on the one hand colorful and vibrant and you know and and fun uh and on the other hand it's an eye kind of judging each other and i feel like so many people are feeling that kind of comparing themselves to others on social media and all that um so yeah so just wanted kind of to put that in and that i really resonated that but even just like how we spend our time you know like you said looking at our phones so much uh during the day so i think it's just so important really to take the time and energy and resources to learn you know how to raise our vibration and what we can do um i love what you said like again with connecting to nature um taking this time off your phone i just actually you'll be proud of me i went to the park today and i left my phone at home so uh, yeah that was like a big step you know uh even if just for a bit just for these like 20 minutes like it's it feels like going without a hand suddenly because you don't have this you know just the thought of like not knowing where to you know uh look into right because you're always checking in always like what's next um but just these times to take to be present so i would love to hear from you you know for people that are kind of starting to get into spirituality um and and even just want to raise their vibration like make it even simpler than that um so you said kind of to journal your thoughts sometimes i think it's a bit hard for for people to start um do you have any questions that you recommend people to ask themselves um for you know raising your energy sometimes it's a bit hard to you know um think above like if someone is going through something the circumstances here so what would you recommend people to do in in that case that they're not sure what to write there because i think with our phones and all the destruction distractions it's a bit hard to sometimes like 
disconnect and and start thinking kind of on your own but i think when you reconnect that's really when the magic happens so i would love to kind of hear about that so yeah it's so it's so glad with i'm so happy to hear what you just share and it's so important because i think like the audience that you have here and on twitter and, and nft world there's creatives right there's a lot of people that are coming into the space and they want to share their vision of the world and for you like the, how your um, eyes of fashion came about. I'm so happy that you've been sharing this. Is like where you really try to look within yourself, right? Look, look at what you really loved within your own inner world and then also look at the world that's, you know, maybe judging or comparing and you try to like alchemize that shadow part into a beautiful part. And I believe for any creative, for anybody who really wants to quote unquote make it in this world, right? I, I, call, I say quote unquote because I feel like we're all just here for the experience of this life. But if you really feel that you have something within you and you really want this to be an authentic expression, you really need to channel your own stuff, right? You really need to connect to your own soul and channel your own stuff because otherwise you will be always comparing and trying to um, go after trends versus creating your own trend. So this is all ties together. Like when I'm talking about raising your vibration or spending time by yourself, this is all to try to connect with yourself and, and self-discover, right? Like discover really what your own voice is. And when I say journaling, um, I mean, I sometimes share with people like journaling prompts on how you can start the conversation. Like today I'm link blah, blah, right? Or I am grateful for. It's always great to chat, to write in journal what you're grateful for. People like forget about this. Right? We're always running after the next best thing without taking a pause and just looking around at our own life and saying, well, how about right here, right now, in this moment, what is it that I'm grateful for? Even right now, like put your hand on your heart, take a deep breath about like, what are you grateful for? I'm sure, I'm sure that, everyone every one of us <laughs> sitting here right now in this space with our phones in our hands like we have something to be grateful for so it's always always bringing yourself back to basics like what are you grateful for today right so i always start my day thinking that the first time i always always recommend to connect with yourself in the morning before you take a phone and before you just like get sucked in <laughs> into social media and the comparison game is that connect with yourself and say and just feel great feel gratitude envision envision how you want your your life to be like envision if there's something you want to bring into the world right like maybe there's a creative project maybe it's an nft maybe it's a business maybe it's a something you want to create with your friends or your family whatever that is right envision that also like i really recommend doing it first thing in the morning because when you first wake up you in this um state right when you're still between like you're not fully fully uh awake in a world where you're like constantly on a run but when you're still like mellow when you're still in this alpha state of your, like brain waves you can really connect with um your truth and if i always recommend journaling starting the, like a gratitude journal but i also a very great practice for anybody who feels anxious or who feels like maybe there's something going on in the, in, in, within them or judgment or whatever right is to do release writing when you just take a piece of paper you can light a candle if you'd like, just like to set up like this ritual space. Because I really like to set up ritual spaces within my, like w with myself, right? When I can have like a candle, maybe a crystal, um, beautiful journal, or just, you know, beautiful pen. <laughs> like really connect because I love all things beautiful in my space. Like sit, sitting down and just start writing whatever comes to your mind, whatever. And sometimes it, this conversation can start really like, angry <laughs> sometimes it can start beautifully but if you're going to continue writing and especially writing with your hand because we because of, we always type on our phones there's a special connection between your subconscious mind when you write with your hand on a piece of paper and i'm sure tell you experiencing that because you write by you draw by hand right yeah, exactly. It really is a special connection, like a brain hand connection. Um, and also, I am familiar with, you know, impacts that it has on the subconscious mind. Funny story, I used to teach uh, fashion illustration. I do teach it sometimes. I just taught it uh, for college for college students just uh, a few weeks ago. I did like a class for them. I was a guest lecturer. And, you know, and one of my students uh, told me that after a few classes with me, like, because she didn't touch basically, you know, a pen or a pencil for years. Uh, and then she said that after um, the class, um, she got like she couldn't pass her driving test for a long time. And she said since she started drawing and practicing that kind of connection, 
um, she suddenly got really good at driving and ended up passing, you know, her, her test after years that she couldn't. So there's definitely wow. like a very special connection between drawing or writing. And, and I think I shared that with you. And I don't know many people, if many people know that in the uh, uh, eyes of fashion uh, community about me that I did in COVID um, a spiritual, um, uh, sorry, an, uh, a therapeutic life art coaching certificate and really like also from drawing different colors and symbols and just seeing different things and just like having that connection with the paper and pen um, versus doing something and typing something onto a screen kind of uh, then it really makes differences in in the way like it really can impact your brain in different ways so yeah yeah yeah, I'm glad you're saying that. Exactly. Because when we have, when we do things with our hands and we, we do like beautiful things like drawing, like drawing is an amazing, amazing therapy. And because you also draw in colors, like it connects you to the vibration of that color. And if anybody's familiar here, like we have this chakra system within our body, right? Like energetic centers and they each represent a color. They each represent a symbol. So when you start drawing, sometimes you just don't even know like what's coming on a piece of paper, but it could be like sacred geometry symbols. It could be colors. Like when you do a drawing, you can actually like heal yourself through drawing. Like you can really do that. Um, so I'm glad it's part of your journey, right? You were alchemizing maybe some of your uh, pains and some of your struggles, maybe some of your feelings and emotions. When you're drawing and put it into the, you know, on a piece of paper, you're creating something, you're alchemizing something. And I really feel that, like, I don't know, just coming through me right now to say that, is that the success that you've witnessed in your business and, and with your NFTs is because of how true and authentic your work is right because you put your soul into it that's why people feel it without consciously knowing or feel it you know what i mean like it's 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 subconscious it's within they just feel that truth that came through that's why you're so successful oh thank you so much and and yeah totally i feel like it just it comes from the heart you know connecting really to our if it's my feelings through drawing or if it's what re feeling sometimes i said intention like on what feeling i want to uh, project onto like what do i want people to feel when they look at a certain painting or art um image uh so i i really love this about setting intention and for me art is being in this meditative flow state which i definitely think would connect to everything you have to share um, and can share about other ways, you know, to to share, to share raise your vibration. And just to repeat um, about what you were saying about the journaling and going back kind of to that. So you said you would really recommend kind of connecting to yourself with um, a, like the journal, having a conversation with yourself or asking yourself all kinds of stuff or doing prompts, right? Yeah, yeah. So for me, like, it, it can either be prompts, but even without getting into, um, you can ask yourself, like, what am I feeling right now? Like, am I feeling the way that I'm feeling? And just start writing. And it's called release writing is that you start without any judgment of yourself because you can, whatever comes to your mind, you write. Even if in between, you know, like, if you ever sit in meditation, if you ever sit with yourself, you'll notice there is a voice inside your head, right? And if you are able to witness that voice, it means you're not that voice. You are awareness above that noise, right? So we always thinking something, like always. <laughs> if you'll catch yourself, there's oh, always God. like a, a chatter going on in your head. Yeah. So what I recommend with the release writing, you're writing that chatter down on a piece of paper. And when you're able to do that, interesting things can come through, like interesting revelations and insights. And by putting it on a piece of paper, you kind of like dumping it from your head into like a physical material world, into physical reality. And for the for a purpose either of healing, because you're feeling something and you just want to release it, hence it's called release writing. Or if you're going to continue writing at least for 20 minutes, you'll be surprised that you may get into a state where you start channeling, where you start really writing something from deeper parts of yourself. And interesting things can come through, but it's, it, it takes it takes uh, determination because it's easy to just like jump off and say, fine, I'm done, and you grab a phone and, and it's over. <laughs> but if you continue writing for at least 20 minutes, you'll see that new things, that, that things can come through, like insights. Insights can come through about yourself. So I really highly recommend this practice. And by the way, I've, I've knew about journaling years, years, years ago, but uh, about two years ago, I got certified in spiritual psychology and from University of Santa Monica. And our professors, 
every time somebody asked them difficult questions or like trying to resolve something, every time they would say journal on it, like sit down and do release writing on it. And sometimes you do release writing and there are beautiful poetry or insights can come through. But sometimes you're so angry and you just release what you're feeling. And if you, in, in that case, I really suggest to not keep that piece of paper. I really suggest to burn it. And you can sit like with an intention, like, okay, right now I'm feeling all these feels, right? <laughs> and you sit down, you write it down. And then without even reading back to what you wrote, I don't suggest to ever share it with anybody to read back, to do anything. You just destroy it. And you can destroy it by you know, flushing it in the toilet or burning it kind of like really what you just re like released out of your psyche and released out of your body. So it's a really great practice. I really recommend that. I love that. And I would love to hear also some more ways kind of to connect. Uh, what are some practices that you use also other practices often? Uh, and also, you know, it's another question entirely. I would love to just hear, I know you've been doing some retreats um, for women uh, in different places in the world. I would just love to hear about those experiences because it sounds like such an amazing experience to me as someone that travels the world and loves to do different things. Uh, but I usually travel for work. So I would love just to hear of like these experiences that you facilitated uh, quite a few times. Yeah, I would love to share, of course. So other ways that I connect with myself, of course, is meditation. And I know like some people, you know, have in the beginning may have um, issues with trying to get into this meditative state and a lot of people give it up. I think like about 80% ratio is like people who try meditation said, well, it's not for me because they just think that they have completely shut their mind and it's impossible to shut their mind. Like the only way you can really meditate is be aware of your, be aware of your thoughts and continue breathing and just monitoring what you think. And then if you sit long enough, you're going to get into the state where you're so relaxed. And for, so for me, meditation is a big part. Also sound healing and you can either do sound healing with someone like a practitioner who really knows how to play different instruments like singing bowls or Tibetan bowls, right? Or you can find various um, sound healing on YouTube, right? Like different frequencies that you can find on YouTube, like solfeggio frequency 431, for example. It's great for the heart. So I, I just put on my headphones and sit and listen to this music. And when I do that, it also, you know, changes my vibe. It really elevates me. So for me, sound healing is a big, big part of my, of my healing journey. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And so cool. And um, I, I totally understand what you said about meditation. I feel like, you know, meditation and, and all that, it's, some, it's sometimes a scary word for people because it sounds um, so like if I can't connect, like people are afraid kind of to let go and just be aware of their mind. It can be often quite scary. Um, but I mean, do you have any tips for someone who kind of, I guess you said kind of be aware um, of, of your thoughts, right? Um, and I would say also like how to start um, implementing some practices during mm -hmm. your day. Like I would love to kind of hear about that. So you said, you spoke about the morning. I also think by the way, about the evening i think the morning and the evening are super important yeah, yeah. Um, and also during the day and another practice i personally love is yoga yeah yeah like any embodiment practice for me it's yoga for me it's um going for a jog for a walk outside and for me it's dancing like i love dancing but even if you can just like get up th during the day from your desk or from wherever you're doing if you're especially like if you're working from you know from home and have space where you could just like shake your body, move your body, move your hips. Um, it's amazing because then you like, you drop from your head into your body, your thoughts, you're just like very present within your body. So there are different ways to connect. And there's also such thing that's called dynamic meditation where uh, before you sit and start just like meditate, because it, you, you, it's very hard to shut the mind, you first move the body. That's why yoga, you know, how when you do yoga, at the end of the yoga, they do meditation because you're so connected with your body. You stretched it. You embodied yourself, right? You can get into meditation much easier because you're no longer in your head 100%. You're more into your body. So similar concept, before you sit down and medita do meditation, do some um, maybe interval training or running or jogging, right? doing something where you move your body. And I like also shaking. Like you just... You just start shaking your body. <laughs> Some people ask me, like, well, how do you shake the body? It's like, there's no, you can't do this wrong. <laughs> you just shake. You shake your wrist, you shake your hips, you shake your legs, and you just start shaking. And for a few minutes, 
And you, you'll see that you'll be able to sit in meditation much easier because you're no longer 100% in your head, in your thoughts. I love that. These are some great tips. Um, and as a spiritual life coach, um, I would love to hear more about, you know, just connecting to higher powers and spirituality, as, as you say, you know. Um, I would love to just hear about that journey of yours and, and what you think um, for, for, you know, any tips that you have for anyone. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I mean, I believe in um, high intelligence, universe, God, spirit, however you want to call it, right? Because it, it goes by so many different names. And um, it's something that's very hard to name. And it's, um, you know, I always say it's it's so easy to read about God or talk about God, but it's very different than experiencing God. And I use the word God, but feel free to change it with whatever word resonates with you more, right? whether it's universe or spirit or high intelligence, it goes by so many different names. But for just to make this conversation easier, if I were to call it God, um, it's very different when, when you experience God. For everybody, it's, it's, it's a different experience. It's a different journey. And I mistakenly thought before that um, I or somebody else has the power to awaken someone. And I really don't, I really feel that's something that comes by grace. It comes already. It comes when um, maybe you're going through some catalyst event in your life that you start questioning yourself and you start looking deeper within. Um, because I, for me, since I was little, since I remember, I've always been asking questions that some people don't even care to ask. But I was not, I've asked the questions, but I didn't really had experiences when I could tell the presence of God, let's say this way. So my first experience was when I was actually on Wall Street. I worked for investment bank and we had Deepak Chopra, who is maybe some of you know, he's a spiritual teacher, writer. He came to my office. He came to my corporate job to talk about enlightenment, to talk about enlightened leadership. And at the end of the presentation, he said, um, would you like to meditate? He asked the audience. Like, we were sitting shoulder to shoulder, like 200 people in the audience. And people were like, yeah, we can, we can try. And so he did this little meditation with us for 10 minutes where he started off by saying, say, I am and your name, like silently to yourself. So you would start by saying, I am Elena. I am Elena. I'm Elena, right? Slowly. And then at some point, as you continue repeating your name, I am and your name, you drop the name and you start saying, I am. And in that moment, when I dropped my name, and with that, I dropped everything that I thought myself to be, right? A successful financier, a mother, a wife, a woman, an achiever, a doer, a creative, or whatever those labels, a daughter, a sister, right? Whatever those labels that came after I am, when you drop it, I right away went into this awareness that I am above and beyond any of those labels, so I am this awareness. I am a divine being having a human experience and using my human experience for my own evolution, evolution of my soul. So that experience, I could never be prepared for it. I don't know why it came at the moment that it came. Maybe I was right for it. I was ready for it. Uh, but in that moment, I remember that day when I came home to my husband, I said, there's something happened to me today. Like something shifted within me. And I don't think I'll ever, ever be the same. And I was right, because after that, I started to have spiritual teachers come into my life. I started to have books falling off the shelves, right? I started to randomly um, get different posts on, on uh, even on social media. So that was seven years ago when it happened to me. Like, it wasn't trendy to be spiritual. Like, it wasn't trendy to be voo <laughs> And there were not a lot of people sharing this stuff, right? And I was looking for my community. I was looking for people that could resonate with what I was experiencing. And I couldn't find them. But now, like for anybody who's coming into the space, there's so much information out there. And of course, you have to use your own discernment to trust what's true and what's not. People speak about all different things about like manifestation, like those trendy words. Um, and it's becoming like sexy <laughs> to be spiritual. <laughs> but um, there, is, there is depth to it. There's definitely depth to it. Oh, definitely there is, because like you said, we are like all energy. Also, that's what I think. And I think that it all kind of starts and ends with our energy and what we're feeling. And, and you know, and we are so attached. There's so many levels, I think, to peel off 
um, in so many ways. Um, so yeah, so thank you for sharing that. That is such an amazing story and really touching. Also, I think that, you know, another thing that I was thinking that is a bit also kind of spiritual and about belief, I think that people in order to um, bring something they want into your life, like you said, you started bringing um, a lot of, you know, spiritual teachers and books and everything kind of that you needed uh, into your life. So I feel that first, like you need to be this thing like a lot of people think they need to do it first like to take the action first. but first it's about how you really feel from inside um and your inner being then i think it's only about moving to to you know taking the action and and getting it in the real world so um i would love to yeah and and this also connects with everything else you say i think maybe we can open the floor for some questions what do you think or you have anything else to kind of say about that yeah i just wanted to add what you were saying it's exactly right and i and i want to share like about the very first spiritual book that really opened me up called power of now by Eckhart Tolle. it's a very it's a very oh, I read it. yeah, yeah it's amazing yeah. and it's so simple but so um powerful and i think that's what's so special about that book yeah and what i wanted to share because you were talking about the inner world versus the outer world and taking an action versus going within um the concept that i learned from that book that really shifted shifted my belief about like who i am and how i should operate going forward is this idea of purpose because so many people looking for their purpose right they're looking like why am i here what am i meant to do so it's very important and interesting to understand that there are two purposes. There is one purpose that's called inner and think about it as a vertical line, right? It's you going within yourself, sitting with yourself, trying to connect to your soul, knowing deeply who you are, looking at your shadows, healing yourself like an inner work, right? And then there's an other purpose of how you're going to then show up and take an action. And like for you, your auto purpose, for example, is eyes of fashion, right? And, and doing this beautiful... Um, paintings and drawings and nfts and even right now like you and i right now with all of you guys and thank you so much for staying and listening to our conversation like all of us here right now like we are living our other purpose we're showing up right we're sharing a message we're sharing a vibe with each other like we're creating maybe some of you all have families like you your mothers or whatever right like this is your other purpose of what you do in the world and it's important because you're here for human journey you want to do this stuff right but then you also don't have to forget that you have the inner world and when you're able to do both wow that's when magic happens because you are now so aligned so whatever action you take is not because you were conditioned it's because someone else is doing it and because you think it's the right thing to do you are taking action that is aligned because you did your inner dive you know who you are you do your healing and now you're showing up in the world on your other purpose which is your horizontal line more like a linear time frame you're showing up more authentically you're showing up with ease and like things open up for you like things are not hard anymore like people the right people come the right opportunities come the right situations like you are in the right place at the right time why because you don't forget about your inner purpose which is going within so just wanted to say that before one open up for questions and i think you also wanted me to share about some of my retreats which i'm happy to do as well so yeah i do retreats. so i live in new york city and i do retreat in tubo mexico and I've been going to Tulum for many, many years before it became trendy. I'm sure some of you know Tulum. And I started going there about 20 years ago and actually bought a place not far from it. And I've just been, Mexico in general has been a very big part of my healing journey. I had my medicine women there. I love the nature of Mexico. It's a very powerful land. Just by being there, you really feel how you emotionally heal yourself. So when I went, when I left my corporate job and I left finance, I decided that I'm going to do retreats. And universe responded in such a beautiful way. Like my first retreat that I put out there, I got it sold in 24 hours. It's just like, wow! Like it really showed that I'm meant to do this, right? I'm meant to do this. And in my retreats, I work with women. I'm all about healing feminine, right? Healing feminine, and it's not just like women. It's healing feminine energy within men and women and by and by feminine energy i mean like the energy of intuition the energy of nurturing the energy of sensuality creativity that that type of energy right and because we live in such a masculine world the world of doing logic whatever we're really much missing we are imbalanced between our masculine and feminine energy so in my retreats i help women to tap more into their femininity that again like 
the ripple effect of that work is into everything. The family, the creative work that you do when you tap into your feminine. So that's the work I do on my retreats. Um, it's a week-long retreat. We do a lot of like embodiment work, meditations, dancing, sound healing. Um, we do some fun activities. We do breathing work. We do shadow work. Um, so it's, it's a quite fun experience. So each day I lead people, I lead women from one state to another. And by the end, we have this big celebration and party and do some shopping and fashion is involved and video making is involved. So it's a lot of content creation. So it's fun. It's fun. It's a fun experience. That's amazing. So cool. Um, so I know I'm not the host, but if um, Victoria is doing the Eyes of Fashion uh, socials today, uh, if you can, um, if anyone here wants to request to speak, Victoria will put you on the stage and so happy to have you here thank you Ada for joining thank you Daniela thank you Netta thank you uh Meryl your name is cut off Mer Merilda um thank you well well Ruth so we would love to hear if you have any questions if you uh have anything you want to ask Elena or me um super thankful to have you guys here today so raise your hand if you want to ask something and if not all good um, we can just continue, you know, to talk. And <laughs> I feel like Elena and I can talk so much. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and I, and how, how usually do you run these these um, spaces? About an, an hour long or you just leave it as, as free-flowing? Um, so usually, yes, they're an hour long. So we also oh. want to be respectful on time. Yes, um, and, uh, yeah, we usually run them, well, it was every Tuesday and Wednesday. But we I've been having events I was invited to speak at every Tuesday and Wednesday evening uh, in the last few weeks. So that's why I couldn't uh, be there myself. Uh, but I'm super happy that we are doing this today. And uh, also, yeah, I, I think it's so beautiful actually with the what you were saying about the retreat and connecting back to your feminine energy. I feel like in the NFT space and Web3. Oh, I think Edda is raising her hand. Are you Edda? <laughs> oh, and Daniela. Oh, hi, Daniela. How are you? Hi, uh, it's not Daniela. It's uh, Damalinki. Oh, Dam yeah, it's Marina. Um, oh, I don't know why I thought your name was Daniela. No, 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 it's Marina. Yeah, that's why I was. I was looking, making sure oh, that like, I'm not taking somebody else's <laughs> space. Oh talk. no, no, go on. my bad completely. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you can hear my three-year-old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, oh my gosh, I love the space and I love the conversation. It's so, so amazing and so, so refreshing. Like, I really think that we should have much more, like, you know, many more conversations like that. It's like, thank you so much, guys, for this. I do have a question. How do you guys feel about vision boards or, like, taking any type of pictures out that you like and then you put them on a vision board or in your, like diary slash notebook uh where you're journaling and stuff like that how do you feel about that yeah so i'm i'm wondering if elena would want to go first um, i love vision boards personally being a very visual person and i have some things to say um I, I do think, I'll be quick, I'll just say that I do think that on the one hand, like, it's great, like, as long as it makes you feel good and really authentic, and that the pictures on your vision board make you feel good, and um, on the other hand, like, I do think that there is space for, like, the highest good of all or something big, bigger and better to come than the photos uh, that you see on your vision board. So I think, like, kind of being, like, having a vision board, making sure it makes you feel good but also be open to like other better possibilities and I would love to hear what Elena has to say and visual is super um, powerful it's also part of art therapy so go Elena yeah I love um I love what you just said I do feel that vision boards are powerful I do feel that it's better to actually create them manually like meaning like cut out the pictures put them on a big, big piece of paper versus doing it just on your phone because i do feel again that's what i, what I said about writing when you're doing something in the physical it really helps you to manifest this faster so i do feel the vision boards are great okay never be attached to anything that you're putting on there because god can bring you universe can bring you much bigger and better things right so when you're creating the vision board be always open for other possibilities for other magic to come through and what I also suggest for you today, because I, every year um, I, I create vision boards, but I'm going to give you a piece of advice. And I don't know if you've ever heard that. Create also not just the vision board, but also hindsight board. 
what happened to you already? Like if you're doing it, maybe even right now, we're at the mid middle of the year, right? We're halfway through the year. What have happened to you already through this year that you could be grateful for? Like put it on a vision board and I call it hindsight board because you're going backwards. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we always want to be on a next, next, next thing without appreciating what you will already have. And when you create these boards, hindsight boards, what you already have, your manifestation game is going to be so on point because you're already like putting yourself in a position where you're grateful for what you already have. And it's going to just like really, really speed up your manifestation for the future, what you want to bring in. So I'll leave it at that. I love that. Super cool. And I wrote that down. I'm definitely going to try and do uh, the sideboard of, you know, what we're grateful for and everything. So, and there was anyone else uh, raising their hand. I think, Edda, you might have been raising your hand. So uh, you're also welcome to the stage to ask your question. Um, eyes of fashion, <laughs> if you want to, Victoria, if you want to put uh, Edda up, that would be great. Um, it really sounds um, like such a journey. I also come from finance myself, so I was, you know, um, listening to what you were saying, and it's it's so inspiring and interesting how we can just make these changes in our lives, and it's it's incredible to keep hearing them because you, at the moment, you don't feel that they're possible, and then they just kind of happen. And um, I wanted to just you know ask you, what do you? What, do you, what, what would be your best advice um, now that you mentioned that hindsight or side thing? Like, for example, I am grateful for have, to have had that career in finance because it, it helps with the business side of it. But do you think there is um, anything else that, you know, when we look back to our old lives, our old careers, you know, where we were in the past, is there something else that we could gather energy from that to, for our future? Yeah, it's a beautiful question. Thank you for asking that. Um, I'm, I'm still contemplating on this because when I was in corporate finance doing what I was doing, um, there were some moments like I, I liked it in the beginning. It was giving me what I wanted. Like I was very ambitious. I was trying to get up on my career ladder. Um, I was making great money. I traveled the world like it served me when I was doing it. But then at one point I realized that it's no longer serving my deeper truth and I'm not in service and I'm not being creative anymore. And I really wanted to be creative. That's why I love that. I love corporate world. And it wasn't an easy decision. Like to take that leap of faith into such an unknown. And I went from finance into like spiritual entrepreneurship, <laughs> which is like day and night. And for me, the biggest growth journey really started when I, when I went into spiritual entrepreneurship, because now I'm not dependent on my, you know, my bosses, my managers, my corporate world. I'm now dependent on me and my own energy. And people that's going to come into my world will feel and resonate to my, my energy. So the work begins really, really inward, right? So whatever I do externally, it's more important what I do internally. So that shifted. But definitely being in the corporate world and knowing how to organize myself, right? How to... Um, build a, a business plan, how to do marketing. And I have an MBA in marketing, even though when I got it 10 years ago, there was no social media the way it is now. So all the information is pretty much irrelevant. But it helped me understand about like psychology of people, how people, um, you know, how you can sell. But again, like sell is a very interesting word. And I had a very like interesting relationship with selling per se, because I always felt I don't want to be selling. Like, I just want to be sharing, right? And if I'm sharing from the heart, people will resonate and people will come. So there are definitely some skill set that I acquired in my in finance that's relevant for me, how I am right now, just in planning and organizing things. And I just overarching, like by default, I always know that whatever happened to me in my life, whatever experiences I had in my life, they're meant to be, right? They're meant to be maybe... I don't want to go deep into the karma because we're already at an hour. This could be another conversation, right? But there's probably, I know there are people that I needed to meet while I was there. I actually met my husband when I was on Wall Street <laughs> and we've been married for 20 years. So I definitely didn't know that I was there for a reason, that I needed to meet people that I, that I did, that I needed to experience that, that it's not becoming part of my story because I'm going to write a book about my experience coming from a very material, masculine driven world into the feminine spirituality that's part of my journey so i don't negate it like i know it was there and i'm really really grateful for whatever i experienced it so i just want to like if whatever when you look back just look at it with gratitude that's gonna really that's gonna shift perspectives for you in so many different ways 
I love that. This is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you so much, Edda, for coming up um, and asking the question. And Victoria, I am so so excited to hear the answer to your question because it's so interesting about energies and spaces. Yeah, and maybe I will um, ask the question like fully. Um, I also used to live in New York City. And, you know, the the phrase you say, the New York minute, everything moves so fast. New York City is like never sleeps. It, I, and then, you know, uh, I had that energy like chop, chop, let's go. Let's get things done. And now uh, I have I don't live there anymore. I lived in Europe. I live in Europe and I feel, you know, in Europe, people are more laid back, more calmer. Then if from Europe, I travel to India. India is like super calm, like calm. They, they walk like really slowly. So they're going okay. When you ask them what time you're going to come, they're like, oh, around three. And they like come around five. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> yeah, like they don't really have, they didn't, I found that they don't really have the same mm, concept of uh, like time as us. Like when we say three o'clock and if we are like three or five, like people getting upset. Over there, it was completely different. So, um, and I start thinking about maybe some places in the world, they have certain energies that some places drive you to achieve things, make you like a go-getter. And some places, they kind of um, like heal you. They, they give you different energy. And like, yeah, I kind of have that feeling. Like some places yeah. are there to heal you. Some places can like break you sometimes and some places can build you back so I would like to hear what Elena thinks about that yeah that's a great question uh, you're absolutely right like every place around the world have different vibration have um and can impact you in a very different way also depending on your own vibration and on your own uh, birth chart and so many there's so many variables to it right so for me I'd say that um When I went on the spiritual journey of self-discovery, I definitely traveled the world and I went to sacred sites. So not just like going to a place that's more calmer and more laid back, like going to Europe or whatnot. I actually went to places like Machu Picchu in Peru. I went to Mount Shasta in California, many places in Mexico. I went to Glastonbury, UK. really want to go to Israel and Egypt. It's on my bucket list. There are definitely places around the world that can elevate you, elevate your spiritual journey, upgrade you in so many different ways. Like I went to those places and I had such revelations. Like when I went to Glastonbury, UK, it's a very spiritual place, very magical place. When I left that place, I came home to New York. I went straight into my office, into my office, into my boss's office. And I said, I'm resigning. Like that, I got such an insight and download in that place that I knew I'm no longer staying in the corporate world. I need to move on and do something else. So it definitely activated me. But to answer your question about like living in a very different place, so that's why I go so often to Mexico is because this is my healing place. I'm in my masculine energy when I'm in New York. It's, it, just, it just happens because you're in the city, you, it, it just it does to you in certain ways that you cannot, like it's very hard to relax here. So I often go to Mexico when I'm in my feminine, when I'm by the water, when I'm, and, and Tulum is like, it's all water. There's so many underwater rivers, you know, this. it's all water. And water is a very feminine energy, right? So I go there to heal. I go to Mexico a few times a year. And because I have a place there, I go to, to recover. But I also feel as part of my journey, because it's very easy when you become spiritual to just like escape. Like it would be so much easier for me to sit on top of the mountain or in some caves or somewhere in India or the feet of some guru and meditate all day long. That would be an easy life. It's much more challenging to be spiritual, continuing your practices and doing all of that while you're in a city, while you challenge. And I have a family and I have children, right? And I'm married and I'm trying to run a business and I want to get into the NFT. Like there's so much I want to do. And I want to be continuing to be true to myself when I connect to myself, when I have my rituals, when I have my practice, when I'm devoted to my soul, when I'm connecting to God, when I'm connecting to nature. And the balance of these two, I think the beauty of this particular lifetime that we can be both, that we can do both, that we don't have to just be spiritual or we don't have to just be material. We can bridge it all. We can be it all. It just depends on how, like, what's what's true for you, like, what's right for you. So to answer your questions, definitely, definitely places around the world, people around the world, they all carry very different vibration. New York is crazy. 
<laughs> but probably for me, like that's a challenge that I'm living in a very crazy city. And I'm still staying very spiritual and I'm still tr- staying true to myself. And that's probably part of my uh, dharma, my karma, part of my path. But I don't see myself living here for the rest of my life. But for now, I'm here and um, and I'm bringing my vibe because I do feel when you raise your own vibration, I could be sitting in a cafe in any like in, in New York City. And I know that people sitting next to me without them consciously knowing they're getting higher vibe because I'm high vibe. So when I'm riding the city, like subway, or not, I could feel people's vibe. Like sometimes I, I'm in the subway and there is a fight going on. And I could be like standing next to a fight and all of a sudden the fight ends because I do feel that when you are at a high vibration, you impact people around you without them ever knowing that and without them ever thanking you for it. <laughs> but that's the path you choose. And then you're going to be rewarded by the universe in so many beautiful ways that you might not even comprehend right now. So what I'm trying to say, do the inner work. It will always, it will always set you on such a beautiful journey and you will always, the universe will pay you back in beautiful ways. So I just want to leave it at that. Hey guys, thank you so much, Elena. You are amazing. Thank you for the great spaces. I truly thank you for everything you're sharing. It was just beautiful. Thank you for everyone that just came in to, to talk. I just want to be respectful for some, everyone's time. And also I have to run to another meeting. So since I'm not the host, if you guys uh, want to stay uh, you know, without me and continue, uh, it will be great. But I have to leave right now. Um, so it uh, depends on Victoria if she's able. So yeah, thank you so sure. much, Dalia. Thank you so much. I also have another um, commitment. I would love, again, I want to thank all of you. I want to thank you for hosting this. And um, I would love to come back and do this, you know, yeah, weekly, monthly, definitely. however, however you want. And that uh, we can continue sharing our magic with people. And you guys can find me on Instagram. I share a lot on Instagram about my journey. I post a lot on stories. So again, same name, Elena Visionary, can there. And I would love to act to the Twitter space with all of you. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, if you both have to go, then, you know, um, I don't see how I could continue a Twitter space. There were people asking, requesting for more questions. Maybe we could do this another time again, or we could... You know, you can uh, come in our Discord and, you know, like if you want to chat with our members in there, you're more than welcome that we could continue this another day, maybe in our Discord. It's up to you. Yeah, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do a shout out so people know ahead of time that we're meeting. If there are any questions, I don't know how that works, but if there's any questions ahead of time that you want to put, like your audience, your community want to ask, that would be awesome as well. And maybe we'll set up a time that we meet like every week or bi-weekly and conversation. That would Okay, work. we can ask our community to send questions in our server and then, you know, we can ask those questions or they can hop on and just ask themselves. Um <laughs> Yeah, it seems like Talia left. I, I know that her schedule was very tight. Oh, she, there she is. Um, so um, I don't know if you want to say... But did I, answer, did I answer your question about the spaces around the world? Yes, um, I um, I felt this myself that, you know, like some like I had also my own healing journey and mm-hmm. which happened uh, after New York and which made me think about uh, this idea. Maybe there are spaces in the world uh, that are healing. So yeah, that's why I asked that question. And thank you for your answer. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for everyone for joining. Uh, Talia left. And we can continue this, uh, these conversations in our Discord if you want. And we will definitely invite Elena again because this space has been a success today. All right. Um, Beautiful. Thank you all yes. so much. And I'll thank you. you. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.